small file, put this in here, and unscrew that. And there should be a gasket there. If not, it would be stuck right there. But you save that. All right. Okay, put a little screwdriver in here and pop that apart like that to get that off and save it. To remove the nut, that is this adjustment nut up inside there. This is a half inch drive socket. Then using a 7 16 socket, we're going to remove the four screws that are holding the solenoid on. And then at the rear of the solenoid, we have the half inch, three quarter inch, excuse me, three quarter inch nut. Jumper strap. Jumper strap comes off, and at that point we can remove the solenoid. Now what we're going to do is remove this snap ring. And we do that by compressing the spring to allow us to have access to the snap ring. careful not to overstretch the snap ring, you have to compress that washer. Lift that off. Take all of this apart. Pull that rubber boot off. You want this washer that's down inside of here. Put the new boot on. Seat that down inside of there. Pop, push that down into that, that groove. Now you're going to put this washer, the cup side up. The spring can go either way. Put this washer on top. Easier if two people do this. it down in there so the snap ring is back in the, the, the group snap ring group. Okay, at that point it's a matter of reattaching the solenoid. Up inside there's a shift fork that has this block with a hole in it and that's where the stud is going to feed up and into. And then we can start our nut. Now we're going to adjust that nut so approximately three threads are showing once that uh, we've uh, tightened that up into position. This time we're going to reattach the solenoid screws and we're again going to use the Loctite sealing process by applying a drop of Loctite on the thread. Positioning the solenoid. Put the socket in here. Yeah, so use the nut driver.
and there's a little pressure that's needed on the back of the solenoid to offset that spring that we're compressing while we're lining up these screw holes. Reattach the jumper strap. Tighten it up. Then we'll tighten the four solenoid nuts. Pull. Be careful not to over tighten them and break them. So drawing our attention back to that adjustment, we're going to use the impact. What will happen is, is that the stem of that plunger might want to spin in the process. So having the impact helps to <coughs> tighten that up. And again, we're looking for about two to three threads extending past the face of the nut. At this time, we can reattach our clamp. And it just locks into place. A large pair of adjustable pliers. And we snug that up. basically ensure that the uh, clamp is lined up, centered on itself. Then we're left to reinstall in the, this inspection plug. And again, we're snugging that up. That completes the this repair of the solenoid boot. So we place our starter into a container of water and we've got a pressure hose going into the mounting surface and uh, and we've sealed the driving housing. There's a little bit of trapped air up inside there at the moment. Apply six pounds of pressure with the compressed air hose over here. Over here, we're going to show six pounds of pressure. Okay, and at this time, we can notice that there are no bubbles coming from the starter. So we'll notice that the changes that we've done have effectively yielded a watertight unit. And that concludes our water test.